So rather than get everything all stirred up at this point with half facts, all we're asking is that we get all the facts off, and then you all make up your minds as to whether this is appropriate or not, and write whatever story you think is appropriate. I watched uh, <coughs> Rick's interview on Channel 13, and he's under the impression that we're throwing away medals. And where he got that, I don't know. Because I'm talking with the, now by the way, the, the things that we're talking about being thrown away aren't thrown away. The documents are kept by the police department on file. Hello? How are you? Come in. Well, if, if, if you have probable cause, drug paraphernalia, anything illegal, probable cause means a warrant. The warrant means the police are doing the searching. They're not having volunteers or the street church or, or you know, anyone else doing the searching for sure. the probable cause of illegal activity or something, right? If, if I mean, when you, when you find a syringe, when you find drug paraphernalia, there's nobody there. The, when the camps are cleaned up, the homeless people are gone. They're not there. Well, except for the guy in the blue tent in the video. The guy, the guy in what? The guy in the, that had the blue tent that had made a, a, a three-way kind of tent out of blue uh, plastic. He was laying there. Mm -hmm. They woke him up when they were doing the search. Yeah. Again, all I'm saying is we don't know all the facts yet. We're in the process of getting them. We have the city attorney looking into the legality of this. We have the police chief looking into what's being done, and we're going to be prepared to talk about it on Thursday. We, meaning the uh, city and the uh, Keep Colorado Springs Beautiful. And that's all we're asking for is let's get all the facts rather than go off half cocked thinking that the information that's being given. And again, I'm only talking about the veteran issue. The issue of homeless is a bigger issue and a longer term issue. My concern is that when I heard that we would be mistreating veterans, that really got me upset because we won't and we don't. And that's why Jack Freeman is an important ingredient in this thing because he spends, he's paid by the United States government to do his job to help homeless veterans. That's why for those that didn't get here in time for his phone number, it's 667-5588. And he is the Veterans Affairs Homeless Coordinator for the United States government, and he, he works here. And we also have a veterans uh, clinic representative that we're hoping to have there Thursday who's going to talk about the effort that's made to give medical attention to veterans that are homeless or can't afford to pay for their medical care. Uh, sir. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably one of the first people who started this ball rolling. My name is Patrick Gears. You know, I am a veteran. Can we kind of just go around and say who we are? Do it. Just a second, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Patrick Gears, and I'm one of the people who first started this thing rolling. Um, I know Sorry, the city. I know it started it. I went up to the to some people and reported this issue, and I'm a person who's started people calling all over the city. Are you talking about homeless? You're talking about. I'm talking about the taking the sleep, keep them. Uh, Colorado Springs beautiful. Okay. They're taking the sleeping bags away from people here. Mm -hmm. I know that some organizations in the city have thought that the best way to keep the homeless out and to solve this problem is to run them out of the city. That's basically what Colorado Springs Beautiful's policy has been. Ms. Cunningham has clearly stated that. I mean, and and so as Mr. Uh, Holmes, they have they've decided that this is the best way to do it. That's if you will not get in, let me speak, sir. Okay. Anyway, what has happened here is that we have found people over the last couple of years who have lost fingers, lost hands, lost toes, have, have been, uh, who have possibly frozen to death in the parks here. We don't know for sure, you are correct. We can't put this together, but there's a pretty good, if we look at the timelines, and we are going to start looking at the timeline. Some, some of us around the city looking at the timeline to figure out if those people who froze to death can be put together with about the timeline that these sleeping bags were taken away. Regardless of what happens here, this particular process needs to be stopped. We need to stop bulldozing these camps and taking these things away. I in a city, in a, yes, in a city that's full of a hundred different nonprofit Christian organizations, this is not the way we treat our brothers and sisters. Yeah. It is not the way we are supposed to treat people, and we need to put a stop to it. There is a more Christian and more 
honest way to treat our brothers. I am a veteran. I am a 100% disabled veteran. Mm -hmm. I served my country for 27 years. I'm a retired officer. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it is a wrong as you do. It is very wrong here to do this. It is immoral. And it is, it is completely against what we are trying to do in Iraq and Afghanistan. We are chasing down people who have done things bad to this country only to mistreat. I just, uh, and most of the people in this room know who Steve Handen is here, and I talked to him a couple weeks ago, and his people have just, had just that very day given a sleeping bag and a backpack to a gentleman who had done three tours of Iraq whose family could not figure out why he was acting strange. The man suffers from PTSD. He now sleeps under a bridge in Colorado Springs. This is immoral. It is wrong in a country that is supporting a war on terrorism that these guys should come back and end up sleeping on the ground here with a lack of mental health care. Colorado is 47th in the nation for mental health care. States like Mississippi do better treating their veterans than we do. This is wrong. We are way underfunded. Yes, we are underfunded problems. here. We're way underfunded on yes, alcohol sir. problems. We're way underfunded on mental health problems in this community. Part of that is, I think, inexcusable. At the same time, we all know what we're all facing right now with this environment today, but that wasn't the environment a few years ago, and it wasn't the environment five years ago. We're in a tight crunch right now, but that hasn't always been true. There is no excuse for a homeless person in this city going without a meal, without shelter, or without clothes. 